Hello, and welcome to this digital dashboard for project efficiency webinar. My name is Lillian Magallanes, and I'm a senior industry consultant for Bluebeam. With me, I also have Michael Calkins, who's also a senior industry consultant, and he's going to help out with the Q&A questions uh, for this webinar. So if you have any questions throughout this webinar, be sure to use the uh, questions window and type in your questions for him. Here's a look at uh, our agenda for today's webinar. But first, a little bit about us. We're AAC's industry experts. So for 15 years, we've taken a customer-focused development philosophy in listening to our customers to create solutions that meet and anticipate their specific needs. We are advocates for more than 1 million customers in more than 130 countries. We advocate for the industry, and as a matter of fact, we have 21 user groups across the country and in Sweden. And we're active in industry groups pursuing standards and advancing AC technology concepts worldwide. And as the industry has grown, so have we, adding offices and time zones across the United States and in Canada, Denmark, England, and Sweden. Not only are we used by top companies to enhance the workflows, but we are used by small to medium-sized companies. I love this quote from Premier Mechanical. When an owner sees the sophistication we're using in the bid presentation, they know that they'll get the same level of sophistication in the field, allowing us to compete in a market with competitors literally 10 times our size. Let me introduce to you Bluebeam Review, the project efficiency and collaborative solution for AEC. So let's get started in our webinar, Digital Dashboard for Project Efficiency. So a digital dashboard allows you to connect to your PDF and non-PDF files. It is a very simple core concept. It really is a PDF file that's linked to all of these documents in whatever storage solution you're using. So you may ask, why digital dashboard? Well, it gives you that quick access to documents. So oftentimes, you know, on a project, we're dealing with you know, tons of you know, parent folders and subfolders. And by the time the project has come to a certain milestone, there are certainly a lot of folders to dig through to get to a file. So a digital dashboard allows you to create you know, visual icons where you can link that document to an icon to give that project team member quicker access to a file. It also increases information sharing not only just internally with your team, but also externally with other team members. And oftentimes when we're getting ready to close down a project, typically we tend to give the owner five sets of all the construction documents along with the you know, warranty manual and everything that comes along with it. Um, but oftentimes those documents won't get looked at again until a couple years down the road. So having all of your construction documents in a digital format not only allows you to prolong the life, but when we hand over a digital dashboard to the owner, it also gives them a quick accessibility to access those said documents they use on the project. So no more having to look at you know, drawings that have been used as a map for many years where it may have coffer rings or tatters along the edges. Now an owner can look at those construction documents five years post-construction within a, a, an owner's uh, digital dashboard. And again, that allows you to have improved collaboration between all of your project team members. Now, the big question is, how do I get started? So how do I start a digital dashboard? Now, I'm a big fan with beginning with the end in mind. So we want to think about who is the information for? Is it for the design team? construction team, or is it for the owner? Now, all of these groups are gonna have different needs. So for example, if you're designing a dashboard for the design team, maybe perhaps having you know links to all of the milestone reviews might be helpful. 
or maybe perhaps a link to an active studio session might be really beneficial to have in your digital dashboard. Now on a construction team dashboard, you may, you may want to have information such as your construction drawing. And this is going to be a really, really helpful, especially with all of your team members, because there won't be any question as far as if, it's, if they're viewing the latest set or not. So by you know, teaching your team to come to the same location, being the digital dashboard over and over again, allows them to know that as they're navigating in their digital dashboard, looking for the construction document, they know they're looking at the latest set. Another example uh, that you may want to have in a construction dashboard is maybe the weather. Oftentimes that you know, impacts our construction schedule, it impacts what happens on our projects. So keeping tabs on the weather um, is a really good source of information to have in your digital dashboard. Other items such as R5s, submittals, um, are also really beneficial to have in a dashboard. So really there's no limit into what you can and cannot have in a dashboard. Now on the owner's dashboard, um, that's gonna look a little bit different from the construction team. So rather than having information such as the weather, maybe perhaps, perhaps having links to m and manuals, training information, or even schedules, those are the things that will be beneficial for the owner to have in his or her digital dashboard. Now another thing we want to think through as we're you know, beginning with the end in mind is thinking through how our team is going to access our said digital dashboard. Whether they're going to access this on a desktop, laptop, or a mobile tablet. Now oftentimes in a project there tends to be a specific folder structure and even naming convention to follow. So I strongly encourage you to have a consistent folder structure and naming convention throughout the project, uh, throughout the life cycle of your project, especially if you are in the design phase or construction phase. And the reason for that is for a couple things. One, we want to make sure that as we're building that dashboard and maintaining that dashboard, that we know where each file should be saved. Two, when we have a digital dashboard, there are tons of hyperlinks that are linking those icons in our dashboard into our specific files or folders. So if we are not consistent with saving that, uh, those files in those folders or even moving files around, it's, you're going to run into uh, the pain of having broken links. So, um, so that, and that's going to delay, give you some delay in your project, especially if your team is not able to access said files because the link is broken. So I highly encourage you to think through the file structure, to have it consistently um, as you create your, your dashboard and as you're maintaining your dashboard, to think through the file structure and the naming convention so that it's consistent and that you don't run in, into the pain of having broken links. Now we also wanna think about um, our file storage. So there's tons of file storages out there. Uh, these are just a few. Um, that I'm pointing out in this slide. So we have Dropbox, uh, SharePoint, and um, Box. We also have Studio Projects, that's part of Bluebeam Review. And then you also have your Network Drive, um, that's um, part of your company, Network Drive. Now with uh, Dropbox, SharePoint, and Box, these are certainly net, uh, storage solutions that can be linked fairly easily into your digital dashboard. Uh, either by using the, the URL and the URN um, address. Now, as you have, you know, just want to talk specifically about Studio and your network drive. Now, these are, you know, great solutions. If you have Bloomer Review, you know, you know that if you use Studio Projects, um, you know that, you know, you have unlimited file storage in Studio Projects, so that's a no-cost solution. And, of course, a no-cost solution is, you know, having your files in your network drive. So we also want to think through, you know, the consistency of where we're going to have these files um, throughout, you know, your project and where these files are going to be linked to in your digital dashboard. Now another thing that I like to also mention is oftentimes is when we're creating a project handover dashboard for facilities, 
we want to think about whose uh, file storage should it live in. Should it live on the construction um, manager side or should it be on the owner side? Um, maybe perhaps they may have a network drive that they want you to save everything to and link to, or it could be an easy solution as far as saving it into a studio project, again at no cost, and then just transferring over that project to the owner. So I want to show you some examples of some dashboards that I have permissions to use. So this is an example of an education dashboard for a university here in Southern California. And they use Studio Projects to save all of this, all of their dashboard documents, not only the digital dashboard, but all of the project documents um, in Studio Project. Now this is a 650 million project. Um, it was completed in the fall of 2017. And they have a, a little over 54 users in their Studio Project, along with 19,000 files and a little over a thousand folder files in that they have in Studio Project. Now, the last time I checked um, the storage that they're using to maintain and house this digital dashboard is a little over um, 60 gigabytes. So that's a lot of storage that they're using um, at, at pretty much no cost. Now, what I like about their digital dashboard is not only is it just for the construction side, but they also design it so that it can be accessed by the university's project managers. So they have a capital construction team and they also design it so that, it's, so that the information can also be accessed by their facilities management team. So rather than having multiple dashboard, um, this Bluebeam user took it upon himself and made it made one dashboard where it was accessible not just on the construction side happening, but also on the owner side as well, and giving everybody a one-stop location of where to access those documents. I want to show you another example of a construction project. Uh, now, one of the things you'll notice here is it's very much well-branded uh, to the contractor's um, branding guidelines. And I love the fact that it's very simple. So, you know, it's a current active project at the moment. But if someone in the field needs to come and access the drawing documents, they know exactly to come into a studio project and click on that link and access those drawings. If they need to access the submittals, inspection reporting, it's all a one stop for their entire construction team. Now, how this was built, you're probably wondering, oh, is, was this done in review? How do I get this done? So I want to talk about a little bit about sort of the style and branding of your dashboard. So in this case, I know that Lynn Lee specifically used Microsoft PowerPoint. They wanted this dashboard to be very specifically branded to them. So they created all of these pages in PowerPoint. Uh, they use the company's branding guidelines. They use some smart tags and some colors um, within PowerPoint. And as you can see in the thumbnails panel, you have various different types of dashboard sheets that gets linked from one sheet to the other. And then once it was complete, it was then you know saved as a PDF file. And then it was brought into review. And then in review, it was in uploaded into a studio project where they had all of their current construction projects saved and they started to use the hyperlink functionality to link from one document to the other. So it's very simple. Um, you can use you know, what you have. In this case, it was Microsoft PowerPoint or it could be Word um, or it could be um, any other tool uh, that you feel comfortable in creating something that's very well branded to your company. The one that I showed you for the university, I believe that was created in Illustrator. So that's definitely a, a step up for me um, from PowerPoint. Now another great example is on, on a healthcare company we have, again, all of these documents are saved in a studio project. The branding was very much catered uh, to the healthcare company that they were working for. And you can see it was very, what I love about this one, it was definitely very thought through very detailed and the experience as you click through this dashboard um, 
it's uh, for me it was definitely awesome to experience because not only did it give me the city but there was other levels of information that it provided for me and I'm going to show you what that looks like as well in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into Bolivian Review because I want to dive a little bit more into the digital dashboard. So I talk through um, as far as you know what is a digital dashboard again at the core it's a PDF document that is hyperlinked to various locations um, of your doc of your documents. So for example, I have here an example of a facilities dashboard that I created for Bluebee. So if I wanted to access my construction documents, you know, I created this in PowerPoint. I, you know, had, you know, some icons, added some text, and kept it very simple. So again, you want to think about your dashboard, you know, having it to be simple. Uh, so that it's not overwhelming for someone that opens a dashboard. They're overwhelmed with tons of information. So we want to make it simple for, for our team. We also want to make it visual. So a hard hat to me indicates construction documents. So again, that's very visual, very appealing. And by having it uh, visual and simple, it really helps you know lower the learning curve with our team. So we want to make sure that it's simple so that it's adoptable. So when I click on the construction documents icon, you can see that I'm now being brought into um, sort of a, a sort of a next dashboard page. Now in this case, I click on the construction documents. Now I want to go ahead and click on the architectural tab, and that should go ahead and open up our architectural folder. Now, in this case, I didn't have it open into another sheet where I listed all of my my drawings in, in that second dashboard sheet, I actually had it go into a specific folder um, that I have in my studio project. Now the reason I did that is oftentimes in a project, whether it's on the design side of things or construction side of things, we know that there are tons of new drawings coming in and new documents coming into a project and they're being updated. So it didn't make sense for me to go ahead and create you know, a sheet, a sheet listing all of my drawings um, that I have within my project. So in this case, it made sense for me to have it go directly into the file itself. And as those files are being updated and saved into Studio Project, I don't have to think about maintaining a sheet where I'm adding additional sheet numbers into my list. I'm making it easy for myself, and I'm just having it go straight into the folder in Studio Project. Now, when I click on the um, architectural combined set, um, I'm just going to hit cancel because I think I clicked one too many times. So you can see that I have my document tabs up here. I have my facilities dashboard and I have my architectural combined file. Now, keep in mind, you can leverage the split functionality in review. So you can always you know, have your dashboard visible in front of you while you're navigating your construction set of, draw, of drawing. So in this case, I have, you know, all of these documents here are all hyperlinked, which is really helpful, especially on the owner side. I don't have to go and dig through, you know, each one of these sheets individually. By having all of these documents, you know, batch linked and saved into my folder. Um, and again, we're looking at a, an example of a facilities dashboard. This is going to make the life of the owner that much simpler, especially when they need to get to information uh, with just one click. So as you can see, I managed to go into my floor plan. I click on that, you know, call out detail. Um, and now I'm here and I'm able to quickly access that information. Now, let's say, for example, from here, I want to open up um, some mechanical sheets. So again, we're going to come down to my mechanical uh, tag and my dashboard. And now I can select and open up the mechanical sheet. So you can see how quickly it was for me to, you know, navigate to those specific construction documents. And I'm leveraging that split screen functionality and review, which I love, that allows me to look at many different things um, in one screen itself. So let me close that architectural tab. And let's come back into our dashboard here. 
Now, one thing I did create in my digital dashboard that you may also want to do is I created a home icon. As you're you know, navigating your dashboard and you want to go back to that main page, by clicking on that home icon lets you go back. And let's say in this instance, I want to go ahead and take a look at <clears throat> any operations, maintenance, and product information. So again, that takes me into another level of detail in my dashboard. And I want to take a look at this uh, product data sheet. So again, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And now review is giving me an option to either view this in a split view mode. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say no to that. And then now I'm looking at this one product sheet that's in front of me that I was able to have quickly access um, with my digital dashboard. And I'm just opening up the thumbnail so you can just see how many pages this has. Also for me, it's just sort of a, a habit to just open up the thumbnails, especially when I'm looking at a multi-page PDF document. So let me click that um, thumbnails panel with one click. And now you can see how quickly I can close that. So again, we're gonna click on that home icon uh, to take us back into our main digital dashboard page. And again, if we have any warrant information, we can certainly click on that warrant information and we can see all that information that it's available to us with just one click. Now, let me just kind of show you a little bit of how all of this was built. So when I click on the thumbnails panel, again, I created this dashboard using PowerPoint. So I had, I followed our company's branding guidelines and I created all of the specific sheets that I needed. So the main dashboard, I kind of started to think, you know, from a top level, what information do I need to have for my team? In this case, I created this dashboard for an owner. So for an owner, um, they need to look at those construction documents. They need to have warranty information. If there's any type of heavy equipment that was um, part of the project and there's training uh, tied to that, so I wanna make sure that I, I'm providing that information to the owner. And I'm also providing um, equipment and material schedules um, for, you know, so they can maintain and operate the equipment. I definitely wanna make sure that their warranty doesn't get voided. And I also wanna provide as much as product information on their, pro on their project as much as I can. And then I also provided a quick, you know, how to use the dashboard for them. So oftentimes this may be new, it may be new to the building engineers. So by providing a quick how-to really allows them to kind of, you know, adopt this digital dashboard. Now I do have this dashboard save in Studio Project. So I'm gonna go ahead and come into my Studio Project. And now again, I talked about storage solutions earlier in a slide, so this is what we want to think about where we want to store our said dashboard. So it could be in your network drive, it can be in Studio Projects. Again, if you have Bloomy Review, you already have the benefit of using projects at no cost. Um, you can use uh, SharePoint, uh, Pro Bentley ProjectWise, Box, and Dropbox as well. So, so I just kind of want to show you sort of a little bit of background of how my my dashboard is organized in my studio project. So really, my team members, all they have to do is just come into the dashboard files. So in this case, I wanna make sure my dashboard uh, folder is set to the very top, so I just added a special character in the name. So as I'm adding other folders in my project, it you know my dashboard folder doesn't get buried. I always want it to have it at the very top. Now again, you know, this is the file struct uh, structure that I talked about earlier. This is where we want to adopt the file structure um, for the entire um, process, the entire life cycle of our project. So I have my construction documents, my equipment materials, my schedule, my training, so on and so on. Um, so once I had all my projects, my files in here, I simply uploaded, you know, my, my dashboard files that I have here and I just started to use the hyperlink tool in review. So when we have, let me open up this file and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I'm connected into project again because I wanna go ahead and check out this document. So let's say I wanna go ahead and add a hyperlink into my equipment location and schedule. 
So in this case, I'm going to navigate over to the Tools menu, select Hyperlink. I'm going to draw a hyperlink box over this icon and text. Now when I select Open, I'm going to click on the drop down arrow because I want to kind of point this out. So earlier I had mentioned about having my architectural construction documents open into my studio project. Um, or this could also be used for RFIs or submittals, anywhere where we need to go ahead and have, uh, need to reference an ongoing growing list of documents. So I highly recommend selecting the folder option in this case, or even, um, or when you select the file option, that's gonna directly hyperlink to a specific file that will open up in review. But when you say open folder, in this case, I want to go ahead and select the option of selecting an existing folder in my studio project. And now from here, I can go ahead and, you know, select that specific folder that I want to hyperlink to. So now that I have it selected, I'm going to say select folder, click OK, and then I'm going to exit out. Um, so I'm no longer in that hyperlink creation mode. So when I click on the hyperlink that I just created, is going to take me directly into that folder. Now I don't have any files in there, but if I did, you can see the list of other folders or files that I have associated with that equipment material folders in my studio project. So I wanted to show you that as an example. Now the other thing I want to kind of take this time to kind of dive into um, other uh, digital dashboards that I showed you as an example. Now I'll show you the healthcare dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna say no to the split view. Now again, I'm gonna open up the thumbnails just so you can have a high level overview of what that looks like. And now I did mention, you know, one of my favorite things about this dashboard is just the level of detail that was really, um, you know, uh, that was captured. So if I were to select any city, so I'm currently in Pasadena myself, um, you can see that it takes me to that specific page. Um, if I want to look at this um, health center, I'm going to click on the plus symbol. Now I have another level of detail where I as a user have a decision to make. Do I want to look at the design side, drawings, construction administration, deliverables, or the meeting notes? So let's take a look at the drawings. Now again, perfect example, uh, this icon itself was hyperlinked to the folder. So now I can take a look at those DWG files, or I can take a look at all of those documents in their respected disciplines. And then from there, I should have the PDF files. So it looks like this particular folder was, uh, doesn't have any files itself. So just to kind of give you an example of what that looks like, again, it has that really nice home icon that I can go back into that main page. Now let's go ahead and select another city. So let's select Los Angeles. So again, we have these medical offices and you, uh, hopefully you can start to see the consistency used in this particular dashboard. So let's take a look at those drawings. And again, it's navigating me back to that folder. Like I mentioned, oftentimes on, a, on the construction side, those files tend to grow um, as a project progresses down the road. Now the other great thing to consider in your dashboard, something I didn't include in mine, is there's certainly a support um, icon in here. So there's uh, other information associated with the project. So this one actually goes into specifically the schedule or maybe some design guidelines. There's also just a help in general for the dashboard itself. Um, those files are no longer there, but I can tell you what they had. Um, so these help files had simple instructions on how to navigate the dashboard, um, how to start a studio session, um, and a couple of tips and tricks around review. So again, don't let yourself be limited of what you can and cannot have in a digital dashboard. So let's go on to another example. So I want to show you that higher education one a little bit more. And 
This one here, I mentioned it was created, uh, wasn't created with PowerPoint, it was created with Illustrator. And the audience for this dashboard was the construction team, as well as the facilities team and the owner. So they definitely were very graphic on creating this dashboard, um, but it's very beautifully done. So as you click through, you know, some 3D PDF files that you want to locate, you can most certainly click on that. Um, I won't click on that because I don't have permission to go into that level of detail. Um, but I will click on this 3D menu. So again, they took the campus map. So from the top level view, you can go ahead and select the building you want to click through to take a look at that 3D PDF. So let me navigate back to the Bluebeam dashboard one. And I do have a 3D PDF in here. So I have an HVAC system going to take a little bit to load, but I'm going to, you know, view that in a split mode. So I have my dashboard on one side, and then in this case, I went ahead and exported it from Revit, um, just the HVAC systems for the facilities dashboard. Um, so this is really great to have handy. Oftentimes, you may want to just take a look at a 3D rendering of your mechanical system. Uh, so what better way to kind of capture that into a 3D PDF file? And once that document loads in a second, I'm going to show you how to quickly navigate in a 3D PDF in review. But hopefully you're able to kind of see the advantages of using the digital, digital dashboard. So while that's loading, again, the digital dashboard is a one-stop location for you know, your team members to come and look for the specific files so they don't have to go down and look at various different locations to locate a file. It increases that project information. So uh, oftentimes, I know from what I heard from my previous projects is I don't have access to said application. Can you give me access? And there was a lot of restrictions on licensing and so on. Um, but, you know, having a digital dashboard for me in my project really helped me a lot in reducing the question of where is fill in the blank. So I really was able to kind of get everybody going to one location, and that became the one-stop um, place for everybody to find the information that they need, um, as well as even looking for, um, you know, non-PDF files as well. All right, so now we have this uh, HVC uh, system load up for me so you can see how I can quickly zoom in and I can even uh, select on specific items so if I want to select on that flex pipe you can see how review highlights that into a nice uh, magenta color also what you'll also notice is as I select that flex pipe you notice that this other item here the flex pipe has also you know, went into invisible mode, so that's actually our, our auto hide mode. Um, so you can definitely navigate around and take a look at this particular HVAC system for this project in here. Now again, this was all accessible through uh, the digital dashboard. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this file and uh, hopefully you have, you know, a, a good understanding of a digital dashboard used on your projects. I'm gonna go ahead and come back to our slides here. So I have that example that I showed you a little bit deeper. Now, if you wanna learn more, we do have uh, training here. We have tons of uh, training materials that you can access from our website. This recording will also be on our website as well. If you're looking to have a much more deeper dive into you know, review or building a dashboard, you know, our training team, you can go ahead and email us at training at bluebeam.com or you can go to bluebeam.com backslash training to get more information. Also, if you happen to be in a, in a large city and you want to be part of our user groups, go to bluebeam.com backslash communities um, and take a look at when the next community meetup will be happening in your area. So hopefully you found this webinar informative. Again, a digital dashboard is beneficial to share information, make it you know quicker to access those documents. And again, to get started, we wanna think with the end in mind. We wanna think about what does our team need? What information do we need to access? And we also wanna think about the owner as well. You know, What's a great way to deliver that 
you know, digital dashboard to the owner where it's going to help them extend the life of their construction drawings. So I'm going to go ahead and take questions at the moment. Um, but with that, I want to say thank you, and I hope you found this informative.